Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West where I am <clears throat> in denial and hoping for the best here. Oh, is this? What is this? Just a few favorites from my collection. Rescued and stored here just before I went off world. Take a look if you like. I'm curious to hear your impressions. So she looted my this stuff. Is dead. Beta and Gaia are gone, and you want me to look at old paintings? Don't be so quick to dismiss the comfort we can find in art. Or the insight we might gain. I recognize those two. Like, no, I can't tell you for names what they are. But do I not get to scan all of them? That's not okay. Anyway, so she looted all this stuff. And took it with her off world. See, stuff like this would have survived. This would have stand stone would have survived. This painting probably not survived. Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon. Whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? More like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. I definitely hear a machine creeping around. Are you really not going to let me examine, like, the statuary that you have here, but you'll let me examine the paintings? This is kind of wild, honestly. I'm actually like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, these actual paintings that she got, that she yoinked, that she stole. Um, but now this is that argument that some like collectors, looters like to make. They're like, I'm just protecting it. And it's like, no, but I guess, I, I guess you could make the argument the world was blowing up and everything. And honestly, this is the closest we've come to anything Apollo-ish. And even with Apollo, we would have only had replicas. She has the actual copy. So I'm, to I'm torn, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, like she, she saved some of this art, but she probably like collected it in a manner that was not necessarily legal because she was like don't care it's the end of my world. favorite pairing on the left is woman reading a letter by vermeer a true master and on the right is a forgery woman oh. reading music which fooled experts into believing it was a priceless original early in my career i became fascinated with such deceptions Eventually, I developed scanning software that could detect fakes with unparalleled accuracy. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh, no. I made my real fortune later. Oh, good. Also, the idea of, like, <laughs> making a program that can scan for it just smacks too much of the stupid AI stuff. And uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think you're ever gonna be able to get a program that can like codify all of that. Like, and if you do, I think a little bit of something will be lost in the world. Honestly, creativity, ingenuity, the ability to like establish like patterns, like the ability to to recognize certain patterns and stuff. Like, it's it's not an exact science as far as I know, but like the people who do it are quite expert and they take a lot of training. And just like codifying it down to like ones and zeros seems like you lose something. Honestly. And why can't what? Celine and Endymion be together? Oh, okay. More. Celine took a vow of chastity, promising to more. never take a lover. So when she fell in love with Endymion, she could only visit him at night while he slept. But then wouldn't she be breaking that vow? Think of it as a forbidden love. What the? Though circumstance <laughs> keeps them apart, still they find a way to come together, however briefly. I mean, it looks like there's like a breaker side up there, but I can, the vibrator, the controller is vibrating and I can see the electrical flashes happening. Where am I? Tilda's mansion. Oh, we are in the forbidden area. I, should I freaking look at this stuff? Man, I really should get <laughs> this. Or no, would it be this one? No, it's probably it probably would be this one. That would like open that would at least take some of the fog of war away from here. This one would probably does this area here. Unknown cauldron, new quest. Devil's 
grasp. Oh shoot, there's one like neat tilt up. So it's right above me. There's a rebel camp in that wide mall. Anything else? An endemian cold. Perhaps we should move on to another piece. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep the forgery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always enjoyed studying the two side by side. Both painters capture light, color, and perspective. But what makes one a masterpiece and the other simply an imitation? The forgery looks sharper. Good eye. The details are crisp. The contrast bold. It tells us more. And yet, we feel less. Yeah, I can see that, actually. The contrast is bolder. That's actually a poor imitation, then, honestly. Like, when you look at it now, like, with that in mind. Like, this, the face on this one's a lot more, like, faded and blending with the background, whereas this one, like, pops out. <laughs> Anything else? What's in the letter? Who can say? What does the painting tell you? She's Freaking. concerned. Oh. Whatever's written in the letter troubles her. Burden. She can't put down. Oh my gosh, Aloy is an art critic. And also, like, that's telling Tilda something about Aloy, right? A burden she can't put down. That's Aloy's life in a nutshell at this point. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Morning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. Oh, so okay, instead, that's why he personal. saved its treasures from destruction ah. just as I saved these works. I you see. You could say we're kindred spirits. Ah, uh, okay. About Jeremiah. If he knew his home would be destroyed... Why didn't he save the people? Why save those relics? He tried, but no one would listen to his warning, so he saved what he could. But how did he know? He was a prophet. He saw an army invade and destroy the city in a vision. So it's more like he calculated which side would win a battle. What matters is that he was right in the end. If not for him, all those wonders would have been lost forever. At least this way, some part of his world survived. I see. This is her trying to justify her you know own actions. You know what I like the most about this piece? Even though that it justifies he's a her own survivor, actions? his home in ruins left with only the remnants of his world. The light keeps the shadows at bay. There's still hope. Precisely. It is interesting, though, to hear from Tilda that, like, for one thing, she's still there's still hope on Earth, and that Jeremiah mourns his planet, right? Um, or mourns his city, sorry, right? You know, whereas Tilda mourns her planet, which I don't think that was the case for anybody else, really. I think that's why she's had potentially a bit more nuanced here, is that she did leave, but she regretted the, the fact that she saw it as a necessity to leave, and she wanted to potentially come back someday. Um, and I think the others maybe didn't want to until their planetary whatever thing they were doing failed. And now they're coming back to try to terraform it. Oh, I guess, I'm assuming it's just Take three, as long but... as you like. Okay. A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son, Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Works of art such as these can often cause us to look inwards at our own lives. I'm sorry about your friend. Have I been able to intervene? No! 
But the risk of losing you as well was Is too great. Is he actually dead? Everything went by in a blur. I couldn't get to him. You know, well, him and Zoe were long gonna, before like... holograms and focus recordings, people relied on art to memorialize their loved ones. Because of works like this painting, their lives are immortalized. And is he actually dead? The one guy who had like a life, like he, he had, I should have known, right? We were like, what do you guys want to do in the future? And like, I asked it of everybody, or I think of Zoe and Varl, the mo like probably specifically. That should have told me something, honestly. Because they were going to go and he was going to like help her, like talk to her people. And she was going to help him talk to his people. He had all these plans of like bringing all this back to the Nora. Like, I'm tearing up. Like, this is... I didn't expect- I did not expect a friend to die in this. Rembrandt had four children by his wife. All but Titus died shortly after she gave birth to them. She passed not long after that. Titus became the only family Rembrandt had. Which is why he painted him this way. Indeed. Then tragedy struck again. Disease claimed Titus at 26. It's almost as if Rembrandt painted the future, closing in on him. Rembrandt actually painted several portraits of Titus, but this one has always been my favorite. It's honest. What do you mean? In others, Titus was portrayed in brighter, livelier states, but here, Rembrandt allows himself to express his true feelings. Sorrow, fear, hope, love, laid bare on canvas for all time. I see this one resonates deeply with you. How could she, there's no, I just keep thinking like it was a stomach wound, so those are survivable if you can get like treatment properly, but if his spine was cut, like, Man, I'm just really, now it's like delayed, but like, I'm really, I'm really unhappy. I'm very, I don't know. I did not expect that. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day but not as influential as you've been in this new world. The militia, they look disorganized. Where others painted such scenes in a stiff and stationary manner, Rembrandt chose to show them in action, preparing to march. He wanted them to feel alive. You can almost hear the commotion. Who's the girl in the painting? Yeah, the one on the left. She's a strange one, isn't she? bathed in light though no one is paying attention she's to like her. the second bright or the many believe she's a symbol of the militia a physical manifestation of their spirit so, i was thinking she was like an angel but she's not real what's real in a painting she's meant to represent the militia's virtue and victory but i like to think they underestimate her she looks as if she, she sees does something. actually what does she know what secrets does she, she almost looks like she's staring right at the back of his head with this like look of like just dis like disgruntlement or disgust almost and it looks like there's a bird hanging off of her interesting the gust by willem van de velde the most famous of his many maritime paintings a ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Yeah, it's going towards like a more, hopefully like out of a storm maybe, and into 
clear skies. Where is the ship going? To a faraway land, most likely. My ancestors used ships like these to explore the world, sometimes at great cost. Mm. What were they looking for? Anything of value. They were traders willing to face unknown dangers to make their fortunes. But no matter how far they went, they always turned their sails home. Okay. So this Von Develda only painted ships? It was his specialty. Following in the footsteps of his father, Willem the Elder. <laughs> the two had quite a journey of their own, taking them all the way to the court of a foreign kingdom. Did they ever come home? No. But eventually their life's work did. I don't know much about painting, so... Take your time. Or the history of paintings. I wish I did. I tried to get, like, some interesting art history books and stuff, but... It just... There's such a vast time. <laughs> examine, examine... Stunning, isn't it? That? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's lidded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? This! How like Elizabeth I was like, ewer. what? Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. Memorial. Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. If this you were was a memorial, how did you end up with it? As the Pharaoh's swarm closed in, my homeland's greatest museum gave it to me. Oh, okay. Along with many other works. In the hope that I could preserve them. A masterpiece like this was too important to lose to history. I even considered bringing it with me off-world to ensure its safety. Why didn't you? I took a calculated risk. This oh. vault seemed more secure than the unknowns of space. I was... Besides, I thought someday I might return. A long life after all has its advantages. To be fair, now this would have survived. Here I am. It's gold. It's not organic. It's metal. It would have survived, just like all the stone and stuff. Um, but I mean, there is like the crumbling decay of time and yada yada. For, okay, so I was just about to ask before she explained it. I was like, how did she fit all this on the ship that, that that they went out with? You know, like on the spaceship, like this stuff's heavy. She's got like entire like monoliths in here. But this is a vault. Why the museum didn't make its own vault? Well, mu most museums have vaults anyway. Um, but only the most, I think like the Louvre and stuff and like the British Museum maybe have like you know, and the, yeah, the Louvre definitely does, but like, um, like, what do you call, almost like a fallout shelter is essentially for their works, but not for everything, just for Exquisite, some things. isn't it? <coughs> Don't know what this She's one is. She's pulling out her own hair. Out of madness, out of grief. It's hard to watch her suffer. I should move on. She sounded muted there, that was weird. A lot of weight on his shoulders. Oh, Atlas! I know the feeling. I should move on. Let me look at the other things! Is that, like... Like a Napoleonic <coughs> freeze or something? I'm used to seeing, like, Greco-Roman stuff on there. Also, this isn't like a vast collection, like a, like a, it's pretty, well, like the statuary seems very Greco-Roman, and the paintings are from a limited time period at well, as well, it seems, limited to European, but it is amazing to have them. Oh, she's got more over here. Okay, here we go. Looks like. She's got more like Asiatic stuff in here potentially. Yeah, it's like a lion guard. Like a, I think it's a lion guardian, like a stone guardian. There was a fish. Interesting. Interesting. 
So as you all can see, I unfortunately had to cut this episode a bit short. It was pretty long. I hadn't quite realized how long the art history lesson would take, plus the talking with Tilda afterwards. So we're going to go, go ahead and cut it off here. But thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to... Adam, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I really do appreciate it a lot. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron. Thank you so much for your above and beyond support. I really do appreciate it. It's, it's incredible and very kind. So thank you so much again. And thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.